Uh, Dr. Cook for being here. Um, I appreciate your perspective on a couple of things to give you context. We're a group of politicians that are charged with reviewing and studying and we don't have the subject matter knowledge or expertise. We've had presenters that are doctors, uh, but not in, in, in the particular field that we're dealing with. And, and, and you could be a stand-in on the Big Bang Theory. You actually are uh, a, a nuclear scientist, so it's great to have you here and uh, uh, have subject matter input. I've got a couple of questions, and I think you've kind of answered a few of them on the safety issue. And then when one of my colleagues over there talked about safety, and you had indicated, well, if there's a problem, if there's an issue, the regulator will shut them down. But they shut down Chernobyl and they shut down Fukushima, right? Uh, after there was a problem. What's the risk that, that, that that's wonderful that we've shut a barn door after a horse has gotten out. But can you give us a level of assurance when, when we have that conversation that are we dealing with a situation where we could get into uh, uh, something of that effect or, or is, there an, is that an apple and orange? I don't know. So Ch Ch Chernobyl, Chernobyl is a total banana when you're talking apples and oranges. Okay. It's a to totally different situation altogether. Uh, in terms of uh, Fukushima, um, yes, there were some regulatory issues there. Uh, lots of lessons learned, and the global industry reacted and improved uh, what they needed to do post-Fukushima. Uh, and there's been lots of discussion on that one. Uh, when we're talking about this program, small modular reactors, and the direction that New Brunswick has gone on this with the advanced small reactor technology, when it comes to nuclear physics, you can start going through how those plants operate. If something goes wrong in those plants, things get out of control, temperatures go up, whatever happens in that plant, the physics actually shuts them down. Okay. We had a gentleman that was presenting earlier today that talked at length about meltdowns and issues. I think there was a lot of can-do mixed in with that. Can you explain to me something going sideways? I guess similar. I had seen videos of the EBR2 um, situation where they did a controlled uh, meltdown attempt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you uh, scientifically walk us through what happens when the wheels come off it on, a, on an advanced SMR that would be similar to, say, an ARC-100 unit. Okay, how much time do we have? Well, they're giving me all the rest of their time, so... I'll use that experiment that you just described as an example. Okay. Um, so, uh, the, the ARC reactor, or the EBR uh, test, uh, very simply put, it was operating, the, the plant was operating at a given power level, they wanted to know what happens if they shut down the pump, which pumped the sodium over the fuel to remove the nuclear heat. Okay? They knew what the result was going to be from this because they had already done all the calculations. Okay? So what happens when you shut off the coolant, and in this case the coolant is liquid sodium, the heat's not being removed from the fuel. Okay? In a water-based reactor we would talk about a meltdown. Okay? In this reactor what happens in the ARC-100 technology is the fuel starts to heat up. As the fuel heats up due to material uh, interactions and uh, the physics uh, of that system, things start to expand. You heat something up, it gets bigger. Cool it down, it contracts. Everybody's familiar with that. As that expands, the tolerances are so precise in terms of the fast fission process that you don't have enough neutrons or you don't have enough material in close enough contact in order to maintain the fission reaction. You don't maintain the fission reaction, the neutron population depletes, the power production goes down, and it shuts itself down. So you'll get a small temperature uh, increase upon stopping the coolant uh, going over the fuel, at which point physics takes over, the fission reaction stops, and the temperature goes back down. That experiment was done on a 20 megawatt unit. Is it going to be similar scaled up to a 100 megawatt unit? Is the principle the same regardless of Physi uh, Physics doesn't change. Okay. Okay. Um, and do you do laboratory testing at your facility for CNL, for the regulatory bodies uh, throughout the course of the country? Always, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now some less technical questions. How many students and grads uh, or grads have evolved into the New Brunswick workforce from what you've done? 
It's funny, we did, uh, MB Power was actually at UMB Engineering a couple weeks ago to do a recruiting session. Okay. Uh, we had 125, 130 students pack into one of our bigger lecture halls and it was standing room only at the back. Um, the group from MB Power was uh, much of the uh, top uh, management uh, level uh, engineers at Point Le Pro. All of them were UMB grads. All of the other supporting people that they brought with them were UMB grads. Congrats. Much of the engineering workforce at MB Power and at Point La Pro have got their degrees out of UMB. It's a very, very big component. Okay. Switching from that, are you involved in supply chain development at all? Not specifically. Not specifically. Okay. Uh, and perhaps not in your wheelhouse either, but would UNB have any economic impact, measurability studies, surveys, whatever the case may be, that like academia that would talk to what the supply chain, what the jobs, GDP, taxes, et cetera, would have for a value? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we have the capabilities for that within engineering and with uh, economics or political science that people have looked at uh, supply chain issues on that. I can think of a couple of names. Okay. Uh, that was all the questions that I had. Thank you very much. Did any of my colleagues wish to?